What's up everyone, it's your boy Nornrad89 here bringing you a special video. Keeping in with the Halloween season, today we're going to be talking about my five favorite horror franchises of all time. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Definitely comment down below and leave me your list and everything so we can talk about some healthy horror debates. Let's get to that list. Roll it. So my top five favorite horror franchises of all time. We're going to talk about those today. At the end of the video, I'm going to drop in some honorable mentions too because this fifth spot was really, really hard for me, but I'm comfortable with my pick right here. My fifth spot is going to land in Evil Dead franchise. Oh, Sam Raimi, Bruce Campbell, like what they did and started. And when they first started in that first film, it was kind of a more horror film. It wasn't as comical and stuff, but as they went on, Sam Raimi decided to throw in this spice and this flair that we love from him and everything and it definitely took off for sure it's got some ridiculous comedy but the the comedy makes it so much easier to watch those horrific scenes that he puts in the movies sometimes and then bruce campbell brought to life the character of ash who's one of the best like protagonists ever in the horror genre <laughs> and he they even started a tv show too ash versus the evil dead like they did a tv show too so uh it's it started some amazing things then we got a fabulous evil dead remake which was a great polar opposite to the first evil dead film but it uh it took sam raimi's evil dead and amped it up to 11 for me so i loved it the remake was fabulous army of darkness is great i love that one too just the extreme overuse of the blood sometimes in all of his movies and just the silliness of some of the demons and everything like that stuff gets to me and i really like like i said ash as a protagonist so evil dead landing in number five my fourth favorite horror franchise of all time is going to be wes craven's the nightmare on elm street where he started that franchise with creating freddy krueger and bringing that character to life for us to see Oh, it's so terrifying, like, because he attacks you in your sleep, which is the most vulnerable time pretty much for everybody. So it's like to have a character like that. And I like the way that Wes Craven derived this character from real life stuff, like based on people who have night terrors and everything. And Kruger, the last name is actually a callback to Krug from Last House on the Left, an early, early Wes Craven film from way back in the day, <laughs> the original one. So, oh, like, it's just, it's a great horror franchise but like as it started going on they dipped a little bit as they got to some of the later ones and everything and like style and graphics and stuff but what pulls me back to it is like freddy krueger the character and the concept of freddy krueger that stuff really pulls me in and pulls me back to this franchise and the first three are, are great amazing films like i still to this day think if nightmare on elm street was just the first three films it would be one of the greatest trilogies of all time those first three films are really hard good horror slashers that embody it and they have great written stories as well and fabulous acting so definitely Nightmare on Elm Street sitting comfortable at my number four spot. My number three spot is going to go to the Halloween franchise with John Carpenter started with the Halloween franchise just it influenced so many slashers after that and like for decades to come and so many horror fans that are horror fans were introduced to horror through Halloween and like we've had some amazing actors come into these films like Paul Rudd, Jamie Lee Curtis, Daniel Harris, Donald Pleasance. Like there have been some amazing actors in this franchise. And when I watch the Halloween franchise, it feels the most like Halloween for me. Like it just feels like that fall season. It has that nostalgia to it. And when you watch it, that's why it pulls me in is because it makes me just feel like even if I watch it during summer or watch it during, you know, winter, like it just makes me feel like that time of year. And that's why I love it. We get some amazing, like probably one of the best scores for a franchise of all time, like the original Michael Myers score is probably one of the greatest of all times. So the Halloween franchise definitely sitting comfortable at this number three spot for sure. Now my number two, I know this might be a controversial one because I've never seen anybody I don't think put this one on a top five list, but I think this franchise deserves a lot more love than it gets the Hellraiser franchise. Oh my God. What Clive Barker was able to do and start for this franchise, it's this crazy sadomasochistic, like psychosexual body horror films. Like, oh, and the, the designs of the Cenobites are amazing they're like 
otherworldly. That's why I love this film is because the designs are so, it's practical, but it's so out of this world. Like it's really like they are from another dimension or another planet or something. That's why I like watching it. And I think this films, the films of all 10 of these, they have the best continuity, stable continuity, I think, throughout the films, even when they recasted Doug Bradley, because most recently in, the, I think it was Revelations and Judgment, the last two, we had new actors play Pinhead. And I still think they actually did really well. One of them, Paul T. Taylor, he's like menacing, buff and huge. He looks really buff and big, which is complete opposite of Doug Bradley's Pinhead, but it was still something different. But the character of Pinhead, the mythology of the Pandora's box, and uh, teasing our greed and our curiosity to play with the box and open it like, oh, these films are amazing. And it actually has one of my favorite final girls in it, too. Kirsty. she's in the first two. She's also in Hellseeker. Like, she embodies a survivalist. I love her. Her character, she's one of my favorite female characters of all time in any movies ever. So definitely the Hellraiser franchise well, I even have I have the book right here by Clive Barker. This goes with the movie. Oh, like this definitely deserves some more love, and I urge everybody to rewatch them if you don't like them. Just watch it with a new eye. Watch it, going with it. It's like they make you think, but just watch it with a different eye. Like oh, the Hellraiser franchise is amazing. My number two. Now my number one. If you know me at all, or have met me in real life, or talked to me, you know my number one favorite franchise of all time. Friday the 13th definitely is my favorite franchise. Jason Voorhees, Pamela Voorhees. I love the simplicity of just the camp setting and like the counselors and like the films. Like it's just such a simple formula, but it works. You know what I mean? It's like something that drives me to watch it is just the simplicity of it and watching the cameras like the killers stalking the counselors and watching them. And it's like that. On like you, you know you feel uncomfortable but you're like you want to watch and everything and like Jason Voorhees and Pamela Voorhees are great villains of all time like I love them as like the killers in these films for sure like especially Pamela Voorhees because at that time we didn't get a lot of woman reveals at the end of films and stuff and hers was very epic and amazing Jason Voorhees is a terrifying character and I love his design just as it's evolved throughout the years it's the hockey mask but sometimes they do the sack head like you know what i mean and just the different ways they've done his outfits and everything and the different people who have performed and played him it's like that michael myers thing like it's like you got to use the mannerisms because you don't speak you don't talk so they got to use their body and it's it's interesting to see that for me and it's kind of weird i always wonder why like my number one is friday the 13th and my number two is hellraiser because they're two like polar opposites like one franchise really makes you think and you have to watch it and appreciate its mythology. And the other one is more, you have to kind of shut all that part of your brain off and just simply watch it and enjoy it for what it is. And But Friday the 13th is what really got me into horror loving slasher films and everything. It wasn't the first I was ever introduced to, but it's really what got me into slashers and loving these films and just wanting to watch so much more. So I appreciate Sean S. Cunningham and all them for coming up with it back in the day and creating that. And so many other people, you know, Joe Zito and all the other amazing directors that they've brought in to like just revamp Jason and change him and add things to him. Like, oh, it's just a great franchise for me. There's only like one film in this franchise I will not watch. And that's like part eight. That's the only movie I won't watch. Every other Friday the 13th movie I will watch. And Hellraiser, that's another franchise. Like if you hit me up, tell me you want to watch those films. Like I'll be down. I'm going to watch these with you like for sure. So Hope you guys enjoyed the list and everything. Let's get to those honorable mentions and all that. So these ones almost made it in, but not really. So like just that Evil Dead slipped in into that number five spot. But my honorable mentions, two of them, the Texas Chainsaw franchise, uh, the uh, Leatherface, his crazy family, those cannibals, those hillbillies over there in Texas, they're wild in those films for sure. Toby Hooper brought us some crazy stuff and I'm glad he created that. The other franchise, George A. Romero's Dead Films. When I think of zombies, I think of George A. Romero's Dead films, for sure. Walking Dead's great and Resident Evil's good, but those original Dead films that he did, Night, Dawn, and Day, like, ah, uh, those were the ones that got me into zombies, for sure. So those are my two honorable mentions. 
Hope you guys enjoyed the list and everything. Comment your comments down below. Let me know what your list is or hit me up on Discord so we can have some healthy horror debates and all that stuff. I'm always there. Thanks for sticking with me. Have a safe and happy Halloween. Peace out.